So the first bonus question, question number 31. What is wrong with this code snippet? So the code snippet that is provided for this question is this. So it's on the trigger of account and this is the code snippet that we have right now. So let's look at what's wrong with this code snippet. Okay, all right. So what I'll try to do is I'll just try to save this file first of all and see if there are any problems. So there are no compilation errors, which means the syntax is fine and the compilation works fine. Let's look at what could be the issues. All right. So let's look at what could be wrong about this code snippet. All right. So this is trigger account trigger on account, which looks fine. And the event selected has been after insert, right? And then they have initialized a list of account list and there's a for loop running on trigger.old that is updating the name field with the name plus type value. And then this particular account is added to an account list and the account is updated. Now the first thing that I can notice is that the update or the DML statement is inside the for loop, right? Which is against the best practices of Salesforce. Let's, let's just take this outside. And the other thing is this update statement is updating each accounts. Instead of this, we can update the entire account list. So these are the two straightforward suggestions or corrections we can do. Let's just save this. Yeah, this saves up fine. Let's do something. Let's create a new account record and see if the trigger is working fine or not. And then we'll probably proceed with any kind of runtime errors. I'll just save this code. Let's go to the org. Let's switch to the accounts list view. And let's create a new record. Now, since the event is after insert, let's see what happens. So I'll just click on new. Let's just save it with the name. So you see, I'm getting an exception error that says system dot null pointer exception attempt to dereference a null object line four column one. So that means there's something wrong. That's there's still something wrong with this code snippet and this trigger dot old here line four column one, right? So after insert is the event selected and the variable taken into consideration is trigger dot old, which is incorrect. For after insert events, the only variable you'll have to iterate with is the trigger dot new variable. Let's save this and let's try to save our record again. And let's see if that works now. Let's click on save. So I'm still getting an error. This says record is read only line five column one. Now the next problem that we are facing is that after the after insert trigger dot new is a is in read only context, which means we cannot do any kind of updates. All right. So this is the next problem we are facing. So to rectify this, what we can do is we can use the before insert event. Since we just want to update the name with name plus type, we'll just use the before insert event loop through the trigger dot new variable. And then we don't need to actually update because the before insert event will take care of it automatically. All right, so let's rectify this code and let's try to save it. So this saves up fine. Let's go ahead and click on the save button now. So our record has successfully been saved, right? Now, the other thing that we see is the name of the record is coming up as trying first null. Now this is because we are trying to open the name field and the type field, right? Now, since type was empty when we created the record, it got appended as null. So what we can do is we can also, as a best practice or a good practice, add a null check for the type field. So I can simply write if account.type is not equal to null. Only then append the name with the name plus type field. All right, let's try to save this now. And let's try to create one more record. So I'll just go ahead into accounts, create a new record. And first of all, let's save it without the type value so only test test 2 is getting created right and now if i create a record with both name and type let's see what happens i've taken the type as prospect let's click on save so my record has been created as test 2 prospect all right so we have rectified the code uh, we did a we did some amount of things on this particular code. First of all, we changed our event from after insert to before insert because for after insert trigger.new is a in read only context. The next thing what we did is we updated the for loop and used trigger.new instead of trigger.old because this trigger.old is not available for inserts. The next thing that we added is a type check, a null check on the type field because we were getting null values when we were trying to append it. 
and we had two more lines that were updating the account inside the for loop and adding it to the list we did not really need that because before insert takes care of it all right so we also don't need line 3 anymore because we are not using the list so this should look like our final code snippet which is working and which should be the correct response all right cool let's move on to the next question question 32 how do you fetch the last modified opportunity for an account in apex all right so the next question talks about fetching the last modified opportunity for an account record in apex right so this can be easily achievable via Sockle. first of all let's try to create some records let's go to accounts let's use this account test to prospect and create some opportunities here so i'll just create two or three opportunities op one Let's define the close date, define the stage and I should be able to save it. I'll just click on save and new and I'll create one more opportunity. This will be op2 stage needs analysis close date 27th and I'll click on save. So now I have two opportunities right and what we need to do is we need to figure out which opportunity is the last modified opportunity for this account. So let me just quickly take this account record ID. And let's go to the developer console and write into the query editor all right so i can simply query this by select id comma name from opportunity first of all i'll add the account id filter where account id equal to the record id that we are looking into in concern and then i can simply use the order by clause so there's a field which is an audit field called last modified date i can use order by last modified date desk what desk will do is sort this into the descending format and I just need the top record or basically just the one record which is recently modified so I'll use a limit one clause all right so let's bifurcate this let's split this and try to figure out one by one so I am just querying all the opportunities whose parent ID is this particular account all right let's click on execute so this is returning two records op1 and op2 the ones that we created let me add some more fields in here I'll just add last modified date and create a date right now we did not modify anything per se so these two date times date time stamps would be same which is the case now let's do something let's add our filter now let's add order by last modified date let's keep it order by last modified date if we keep it just order by last modified date this will sort this in ascending format all right if i click on execute so you see i see op1 first and op2 second right and as soon as i add the desk keyword this will sort it in descending format then op2 comes first and then op1 comes later right and i just want the latest record which is limit one now let's click on execute i'll get my only record which has been last modified now to cross check let's do something since we are getting op2 as the result right now let's go into op1 our first opportunity and let's modify something so that the last modified date changes for this particular record all right let's go to details and let's just set this to private let's click on save all right now that this mod opportunity has been modified let's refresh this grid so you see i'm getting op one as the result now and the last modified timestamp has changed as well it's 2448 and 2219 right so this is probably how you'd fetch the latest or you know the last modified opportunity for a particular account and if you are using this in apex you might also have to you know bulkify this particular circle you might have multiple account ids in concern and you can use the same circle and iterate over it all right cool let's look at the next question so let's look at the last question in the series how can you configure many to many relationships in salesforce so to configure many to many relationships salesforce provides a concept to create junction objects now a junction object is nothing but the identifier of how two entities are interlinked and associated to each other. To configure junction objects, we need the two objects that need to be linked and we can create a third custom object. So for example, if you take the recruiting application, you can see that a position can be linked to many candidates and a candidate can apply for different positions. Now to create this data model, you'll need a third object called job application that links the two. So you'd create a lookup field for both the objects position and candidate on the job application object this will establish many to many relationship between position and candidate via the job application object 
known as junction object. 